Bingo. If it can be written in y equals mx plus b form, then we know it is a linear function. There we go. I guess that's better. Okay. So if it's a linear function, then we can distribute the 4 and the 12, and we'll be able to write it in y equals mx plus b form. What do you get when you distribute the 4? McCarvin, what'd you get? Um, I got 4y uh, minus Sixteen equals when we distribute the twelve. Colin, what'd you get? Uh, six x plus twelve. Six x plus twelve. You are correct. Why does twelve times a half give you six, Colin? Because half of twelve is six. Excellent. Half of twelve is six. You're taking that twelve. You're dividing it by two. Okay. Does anyone know what to do next in order to turn it into y equals mx plus b form? Gabriel. You add sixteen and twelve. Perfect. You said add 16 to the 12. Why the 12 and not the 6x? Because it likes terms. Very good. 12 and 16 will add up to? 28. So we have 4y equals 6x plus 28. Okay, peeps. What's my last step to put it in y equals mx plus b form? Karen? Let's go. You divide everything by 4. Divide everything by 4. So check it out. We're going to get y equals a 6 evenly divisible by 4. Yes. No, so it's going to stay as a fraction. It's not. But can we simplify 6 over 4? Yeah. What can we simplify it to? Uh, 3, over two. 3 over 2. Or 1 and 1 half, right? So we have 3 over 2x. Is 28 evenly divisible by 4? Yeah. What does it become? Seven. Plus 7. Do we have an m? What is it? Three. three over two. Do we have a B? What is it? Seven. Is this Y equals MX plus B form? Yes. Bingo. We know that it is linear. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Okay. Now we're going to see a little bit later on when we get to 3.5. It's not going to be right if you leave it like that. Okay, but for now, whether it's linear versus nonlinear, it's okay like that. David. Yeah, um, I'm solving it for purposes later on in this lesson. If you distribute it and you're like, I know this thing is never, like, I know that I can turn it into y equals mx plus b form, and you stopped and you were like, it's linear, I would accept that, okay? But I'm doing this because later on we're going to have to change it into this form. Because y equals mx plus b is not just the linear form, it's also called slope-intercept form, which we'll get to in a little bit, okay? Any questions on the warm-up? These are good questions. So today, we are jumping to 3.4. We are using something called standard form. Underline that, people. That is super important. We are going to learn three different forms in chapter three. This is the first one, okay? Standard form is when your linear equation, which involves x and y, is set up as such. It's set up as ax plus by equals c, where a, b, and c are constants. What's a constant? What's a constant, Mia? Okay. A number, okay? So a, b, and c will be numbers. x and y are considered my variables. Do you guys see that? So you're not going to see A, B, and C. They're just going to be numbers, but this is the standard form. What do you notice about standard form? What do you notice about it? AX plus BY equals C. AJ? There's two variables that aren't the same. Very good. There's two variables. There's an X and there's a y. y. What else do you notice about standard form? Compared to what we've seen in the past. Yeah, Gabriel? Yeah, there's three letters now. There's A, B, and C. We will see numbers, though, because A, B, and C are going to represent numbers. But that's a good observation. What else? It's kind of like A squared plus B A little bit like the Pythagorean theorem. Yeah, I like that. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. That's high level. What else? Are X and Y on different sides of the equation? No. No, they're on which side specifically? No. The left. This is how we recognize standard form. X and Y are both going to be on the same side, specifically the left side of your equation. Got it? Okay. Before we dive into standard form, I just want to touch a little bit on what a horizontal versus a vertical line is. Okay. 
A horizontal line happens when y is equal to some number b, okay? So all of my y values are gonna be equal to some value b, and my x's can be whatever he chooses, okay? So it's gonna be y equals b will create a horizontal line. A vertical line happens when x is equal to some number a, we'll call it, okay? So x is a fixed value at a, and y can be whatever he wants, okay? Let's check out how we would do this. So if we're asked to graph a linear function, and we'll do the first one where y is just equal to a number, we're gonna say, okay, all of my coordinates, how many coordinates does Mr. Yurko want? Three. Three, when we're graphing. All of my y values here have to be what? If y must be equal to four. All of my y values must be? Four. Four, so put four right here. Four, four, and four. You can pick whatever you want for x. Juliana, give me any number. Zero. Zero. Matthew, give me any number. Two. Two. Brooke, give me a different number. Five. Five. Okay. So zero, four, two, four, and five, four. Are all of my y values four? Yeah. Then all of these numbers will lie on this line. Let's see what we get when we plot it. Where's zero, comma, four? Um, right. uh, At zero, go up four. At zero, go up four. So right here? <coughs> Perfect. Where's two, comma, four? Go to right two, and then where? Up four. Up four. Hmm. Where's five comma four? Five to, five to the right and then up. Four. Wait, what kind of line do you look? Does it look like we're gonna make? Horizontal. Horizontal. Cool beans, right? Yeah. Ah, uh, always a thousand percent, and the line must have arrows. arrows. Okay. Hey. Question, so anytime you have a y equals a number, what kind of line are we always going to get? Horizontal. Write that down, horizontal. Okay? Because imagine you're fixing your y value. So y can't be anything but four. Do you guys agree? Can x roam however he wants? Yeah, he's free. He's like, I'm not set to anything. I'm going to run around. So he's running left to right no matter what he wants. But y must always be equal to 4. We get a horizontal line. Sometimes you guys get tripped up on this and it's going to happen. Because you're going to be like, y is vertical, right? Y is up and down. It should be a vertical line. Don't fall for the trap, okay? You've got to try to remember somehow that when y is equal to a number, it becomes a horizontal line. Do you guys see that? Okay, so if we have for the next one, x equals a number, what line would you assume we would get here? Vertical, Vertical okay? So let's write it down. How many points does Mr. J want? Three. three, so write three coordinates. And we know all three of my coordinates must have what value in them? Two. Negative, two. negative two. For the x or for the y? For the x, so put negative two, negative two, and negative two. Colin, give me any Y. One. One. Mr. Solution, give me any Y. Uh, two. Two. And Alfonso, give me a negative Y. Uh, negative four. Negative four. Plot them. Plot all three of those points. Negative two, one. Negative two, two. And negative two, negative four. Let's see what we get. When you're done, look up at the board. Did you get a vertical line? Yes. Yeah. Say what? what? So when we, when we have x equals a number, do you think we're always going to get a vertical line? Yes. You betcha. <laughs> <Sound like this>. <laughs> <laughs> do you I want them in a line, and I want you to tell me whether it's a vertical or a horizontal line. Go. All right, in your groups, I would like you to look at the board, see if you got it right, and compare in your group. If you got it wrong, I want you to figure out why you got it wrong and share that wrong answer with your group so you guys all learn from that mistake. Go. It's a very good point. Hey, hey, did everyone hear Mia's question? She asked, couldn't we all pick different values? Yes, you're going to have different points, but you're all going to have the same line. Do you guys hear that? Yeah. The same line. Got it? Okay, here's my candy question. And I restocked people. 
Which of these four, which of these four are linear? Which of these four are linear? Kyra? Um, no. Gabriel? All of them are linear. One. Which of these four are functions? Mr. Fuxa? All of them. Wrong. Colin? A and C. Okay, Colin, you get it. If you can tell me why. What? In A and C? Why are B and D not functions? Because it's only one input. Very good. Very good. Okay. So if we were asked which of these are linear functions, they're all linear. Do you guys agree? They're all straight lines. But which of them are functions? A and C only. Do you guys see that? So the only one that's a linear function are my horizontal lines. Do we see that? Excelente. Okay. Moving on. Now we get to talk about standard form, my favorite form, okay? I'm supposed to remain impartial, but I can't, okay? It's just so awesome. All right, so standard form is the coolest because you can literally plot your graph with an equation just using two steps, okay? All we're gonna do is we're gonna use standard form. We can set it up using the x-intercept and the y-intercept, and it's very easy. It's a two-stepper, okay? Your x-intercept is wherever your graph crosses the x-axis. So look down at this graph, okay? Do you guys agree that this horizontal one is my x-axis and this vertical one is my y? If you were on somewhere on your x-axis, what do all of these points have in common? What do all of those points have in common? 7 comma 0, 6 comma 0, 5 comma 0, 4 comma 0, 2 comma 0, 1 comma 0. AJ? Which is? Y must be equal to 0. It, to be on the x-axis, your y value must be? Now look at the y-axis. If you were going to be somewhere on your y-axis, what would your x value have to be, Colin? X must be 0. So check this out. We are going to find the point where our graph crosses the y-axis, and we're going to find the point where our graph crosses the x-axis. We're going to plot those two points, draw a line through them, and that's it. Okay? So this is the only form where you only need two points. Okay? So scroll over to the left. This is the first one we're going to look at. Okay? Now, remember, standard form is in the form a x plus b, y equals c. In this example, what is my a value? Three, so a is equal to three. What's my b value? b is equal to four, and my c value is 12. So is this in standard form? Absolutely, everything matches up. We have an x, we have a y, we have numbers filling in for a, b, and c. Are we Gucci with identifying standard form? No questions? Okay, now we apply it. Step number one is we're going to find our x-intercept. Now remember, our x-intercept is where our graph crosses the x-axis. In order to cross the x-axis, what did all those points have in common? We just talked about it. Zero. Y was equal to zero. So to find the x-intercept, set y equal to zero. zero. So grab your equation, which was 3x plus 4y equals 12, and just make y zero, and let's see what we get. So we're going to get 3x plus 4 times 0 equals 12. Do you guys all see where I'm substituting in? Mia's shaking her head no. So you agree this was my original equation, right, Mia? I'm taking y and replacing him with? So it's the exact same equation, but 0 for y. But I don't get where you're getting the 0 Because we're finding what intercept? Uh-uh. X-intercept. For x-intercepts, you set y equal to zero. Does that make a little bit more sense? Okay. So we set y equal to zero. What's four times zero? So do we have to write that term? For the interruption, at this time, all members of the Lady Mavericks, JV, and freshman volleyball team should be dismissed. Thank you. So you guys agree we're going to get 3x equals 12?
Okay. What do we do to solve for x? Yeah? Divide by, no, not by 3x. Just by 3. Divide by 3, divide by 3. x is going to be equal to 4. Guess what we just found? The x intercept. So if we were to write it as a coordinate, what would it be as a coordinate? x was equal to what? 4. And y was equal to? 0. So make sure 4 comma 0 should lie on what axis? On the x-axis. 4 comma 0. Do you guys see that? X-intercept lies on the x-axis. Y-intercept lies on the y-axis. Ah, did you guys hear what David just asked? If we're trying to find the y-intercept, do we set x equal to zero? We absolutely do. So right, step number two is we're going to find our y-intercept by setting x equal to zero. Let's think about that. You guys all agreed that on my y-axis, all of my x values were what? Zero. So to find where my graph goes through that axis, I'm just going to set x equal to zero, and it should tell me exactly what y needs to be. Okay. So we're going to make 3 times 0 plus 4y equals 12, right? Because we're substituting 0 in for x. 3 times 0 gives me? 0. And when you add that with 4y, does it change it? No. no. So we just have 4y equals 12. What do I do to solve? Divide by 4. We divide both sides by 4, and I get y equals 3. Trace. What is the coordinate of my y-intercept? Karen? 0, 3. 0, 3 is going to be 0 left or right, up 3 units. You're going to get a point right here. How many points did I say I needed normally? Three. Normally, we need 3. For standard form, oh, two. 2. We can just draw a line through these. Cool, right? Yeah. And we've got the equation of our line. We've seen worse? What? Um, no, not really. This is, about, this is about as bad as it gets. Oh. Now, question for you, okay? If you were unsure about what you did. Here is what you could do to check to make sure that you did it right. So this is like a great tool for like after your test being like, okay, let me make sure I got this right. Try to find a point that goes through your line. That's not one of the intercepts. Try to pick a point that your line goes through that's not one of the intercepts. AJ? One two. One comma two. It's close, but it doesn't exactly go through that point, so we're not going to pick that one. Emma? Um, five, eight, uh, negative 3, 5. Negative 3, 5. I, I think that's close. I think the actual point is negative 4, 6. I think it goes through that one. Okay? Write this down. Negative 4, 6. Hold on, McCarvin. Hold on. All we have to do is take our original equation and replace x with negative 4 and y with 6. And it should work for those two values. So you guys agree it was 3x plus 4y equals 12? Yes? So we're going to replace x with negative 4. So 3 times negative 4 plus 4 times 6 should equal 12. What's 3 times negative 4, guys? Negative 12 plus 4 times 6? 24 is 12. Is negative 12 plus 24 equal to 12? Yes. So 12 equals 12. Once I put a check mark, I know I did this problem right because I checked an additional point. I'm going to repeat this. This is not a required step. 
If you stopped after the X intercept and the Y intercept, you drew your line, you put the arrowheads, you were like, I'm done. I'm okay with that because you're confident, you're feeling good. But let's say there were fractions and stuff involved and you're like, I'm not quite sure I did this right. You can always check it by finding a point that your line goes through and checking it back with the original. Questions now, McCarvin. Oh, I was gonna ask the yes, you may. Make sure you sign out. Okay, this was a lot. We're gonna do one more example and then I'm gonna set you guys loose to do your example on your own, okay? All right, check it out. 2x minus y equals 4. First things first, check if it's in standard form. Is this guy in standard form? Yes. What's my a value? Two. What's my b value? One. One. No. Negative one. Negative one. What's my c value? Four. Cuatro. Are we in standard form? Yes. You bet your butt. Step number one, finding the x-intercept, Yes. Who remembers? If I'm on my x-axis, what do I do to find that number? Matthew? Uh, zero or y. Yes, you make y equal to zero. Excellent. So we're going to get 2x minus zero, zero equals four. Gabriel? Why'd you put a, b, c? Just to make sure it's in standard form, right? Because standard form is ax plus by equals C. So I want to match it up just to make sure I can use the intercept section to make sure that I can graph it correctly. Okay. So we get 2x minus 0 equals 4. 2x equals 4. Divide both sides by and we get x equals. What did I just find? My x intercept. What is the point here? 2 comma 0. Zero. Okay. Number two. What do we find after that? Karen. Why is it, um, why is it two, zero, not zero, two? Why is it two, zero, not zero, two? Um, did you make X zero? Did you make Y zero? So isn't this your Y coordinate? Ah, good question. Okay. Mr. Salucci, help me out. What's the second step? Come on, brother. Yeah. Let's go. We make x equal to zero. Juliana, if I made x equal to zero, what's my new equation? What's my new equation if I make x equal to zero? Two times zero. Bingo. Minus y equals four. Miss Alonzo, what do I do? What's 2 times 0? Zero? 0. And what's 0 minus y? If you have nothing and you subtract y from it, what do you have? Not, not y. Negative. negative y. So we have negative y equals 4. Colin, what do I do last? Um, divide, by negative one. divide by negative 1. y is equal to what, Caden? Negative 4. Kirsten, what do I just find? My Y. Not just my Y. More specific. There we go. Y intercept, okay? So, what's my point? Uh, zero, comma, negative four. zero, comma, negative four. Let's go. Let's plot them, okay? So, the first one was two, comma, zero. 2 comma 0. The second one was 0 comma negative 4. With standard form, how many points do I need? Do I have enough? Yes. Draw that line, baby. If we weren't sure we did it correctly, what could we do? Find another point that's on that line and check it. Yeah. What's the other point? The other point is 4, 4. 4 comma 4? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good. 4 comma 4 is another point. I think 1 comma negative 2 is another point too, if you want to check that one, okay? Questions? Concerns? Excitement? Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, is this still for quarter one? What? This lesson? Yeah. This is for your knowledge forever. 
But you guys to do this last one on your own. Go ahead and get started. Okay, the answer has been posted on the board. In your groups, please make sure everyone got it. And if you didn't, share your mistakes with everyone, okay? Even if you all got it, I want you discussing how you got it. Make sure you guys did the same steps. Okay, people, last, last, last thing is we're gonna do our absolute favorite thing in the world, a word problem, okay? And those of you that still sigh whenever I say that, look at the back wall. You need to have a growth mindset, people. It may not be your favorite now, but are you working to get better? You better be. Okay, here we go. So check out the word problem. You're planning an awards banquet for your school. You need to rent tables to seat 180 people. We're underlining every single number it gives us. Tables come in two sizes, small tables that seat six people and large tables that seat 10 people. The equation 6x plus 10y equals 180 models this situation where X is the number of small tables and Y is the number of large tables. Matthew. Can go to the yeah, uh, no. Okay. Graph the equation and interpret the intercepts. Guys, first and foremost, look at the equation that they gave us. Is it in standard form? Yes. What's my A value? Six. What's my B value? Ten. And what's my C? 180. 180. So if we're in standard form, we can just use the intercepts. So step number one, use your X intercept by setting y equal to zero. So we're gonna get six times x plus 10 times zero equals 180. Eventually, yes, we're gonna get six x equals 180. Divide both sides by six and you're gonna get x equals, check this out, people. What did y represent in our problem no what did y represent in our problem david the number of large tables so if we have zero large tables how many small tables will we need 30 think about that if there's 30 small tables would we fit 180 people? If we had 30 small tables and zero large tables, if we had 30 small and zero large, would we fit 180 people? Yes. Why? Six Each small table fits six people. Six times 30. And if we take six times 30, we get 180. So if we're already fitting 180 people at all the small tables, do we need any large tables? So check it out. 30 comma zero is gonna be our first point. Let's plot it. It's given us to us as a blank coordinate plane because we're gonna to have to fit all the way up to 30 for X. So counting by ones is not an option. What should we count by? You would count by tens? I would count by fives just to be safe, okay? So let's count by fives. Five, 10, 15, 20, are you wrong if you count by tens? No, like you're still right. Uh, 25 and 30. 30 comma zeros right here. We Gucci with that? Any questions? Okay, how do we get this second point for our graph? What? Make x equal to zero to find what, David? The y intercept. Guys, we need to know that word intercept that's where your graph crosses the y-axis so we're setting x equal to zero we're going to get six times zero plus 10y equals 180. so we're going to get 10y equals 180 divide by 10 divide by 10 y equals 18. what is this saying in the context of our problem natalie Very good. If we had zero small tables, we would have 18 large tables. Why does that make sense? Because 18, um, you can put 10 people per table and 10 times 18 is 180. Very good. The large tables hold 10 people each. And 10 times 18 gives us 180. Very good. Okay. 
What should I count by in the Ys so I can fit up to 18? Twos or threes are good too. I would, um, let's use twos. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, all the way up to 18. Put a dot and connect. Now, this is tricky. I am not going to add arrowheads for this example. Does anyone think they know why? Matthew? Because it doesn't keep going. Why doesn't it keep going? Because the tables don't keep going up. Good. What would happen if I had a point over here? Uh, what would my x value be? Negative. negative. Can you have a negative number of small tables? No. 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 What would happen if I had a point down here? What would be negative? The y. The y. The Can you have a negative number of large tables? No. No, so if you can't have negatives, your graph is going to stop. Do we see that? So one more cool thing that I'm gonna show you, okay? Connected but don't add arrows. Connected but don't add arrows. Find a point that lies on your graph that's not one of the intercepts. Colin? Uh, 20, 6. 20 comma six? Yes. 20 comma six. Does it look like it goes through yours as well? Then put a point there. How could we check that that's right? That we could fit 20 small tables and six large tables and fit 180 people there. Natalie? You plug it into the equation. Very good. So our equation was six times x, which is now 20, plus 10 times your y value, which is now six. And that should total to 180. What's 6 times 20? 120. What's 10 times 6? 60. So we have 60 people at the large tables, 120 at the small. Have we sat everyone at our group? Yes. Yeah, it's 180 equals 180. So we checked it. Cool, right? So any point on that blue line is a combination of large and small tables that'll see 180 people. Pretty nifty, right? You guys don't think so? I think it's kind of cool. Okay.